ते गुजरात सो गुड नून डियर फ्रेंड्स नाउ वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द रेगुलेशन ऑफ द सेल साइकिल इन डिटेल वी हैव डिस्कस बाय दिस टाइम दैट सेल साइकिल इज गवर्न बाय सर्टेन प्रोटीन्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन द साइटोप्लाज्म नोन एज साइक्लिन्स देयर लेवल्स सिंस इंक्रीजेस एंड फॉल्स इन अ साइक्लिक फैशन दैट इज व्हाई दे आर नोन एज साइक्लिन्स साइक्लिन्स विल एक्सर्ट देयर इंपैक्ट और इफेक्ट via cyclin dependent kinases the activity of cyclin dependent kinases would depend upon the levels or the concentrations of the cyclin the cyclin along with cyclin dependent kinase is known as mpf or maturation promotion factors let's see a question on cell cycle which is which was being asked in the net cell cycle is controlled by proteolysis of cyclin dependent kinase phosphorylation of cyclins डीफॉस्फोराइलेशन ऑफ द साइक्लिन्स और प्रोटियोलाइसिस ऑफ साइक्लिन्स एक्चुअली इट इज द साइक्लिन्स विच आर द लिमिटिंग फैक्टर्स एंड हूज लेवल वेन गोज डाउन बाय प्रोटियोलाइसिस द सेल साइकिल विल स्टॉप द मेजर सेल साइकिल रेगुलेटरी प्रोटीन्स और फैक्टर्स आर साइक्लिन्स एंड दे विल एक्सर्ट देयर इम्पैक्ट वाई आर साइक्लिन डिपेंडेंट प्रोटीन काइनेजेस विच आर नॉर्मली बींग एब्रिवेटेड एज सी डी केस cyclin plus cdk is normally mpf or maturation promotion factors then there are some other protein kinases also which regulates even the activity of the mpfs or the cyclin dependent kinases they are known as cak or cyclin dependent kinase activating kinases these are the regulators of the cdks then as there are regulators of cdks mostly they promotes their activity on the other hand there are also cki that is cyclin dependent kinase inhibitory subunits and apcs anaphase promoting complexes these apcs would switch on the ubiquitination pathways which can activate proteolysis via proteasomes we are knowing very well that proteins are degraded by ubiquitinization and once a particular protein is ubiquitinized it would be marked for degradation now it was the potu rao and robert lesson from the university of the colorado they conducted certain cell fusion experiments to study the cell cycle and the study of this cell cycle had a enormous practical implications to combat the cancer you can see in the diagram that when m phase cells were fused with interphase cells or other stages of cells they bring about the changes which are the characteristics of that particular stage for example uh, chromosomes from g1 phase they start condensation or they start to uh, constrict uh, when they were fused with the metaphase similarly various stages of the cells when they were fused uh the characteristic feature of that particular stage was induced even in the cells which were in the interface so it was believed that there are something something there are certain proteins in the cytoplasm which induces the interface cell to behave as if it is in the m phase so summarily the results of all these experiments suggested that the transitions from g1 to s or from g2 to m were under the positive control that means they are being induced by presence of some stimulatory agents mostly it might be a protein or enzymes thereafter it was being found that it are, these are known as mpfs these proteins triggers the interface cells to get ready for the mitosis they are composed of two subunits one is uh, the regulatory unit which is having kinase activity and another is uh sorry one is the regulatory unit which will bind to the cyclin and other is the catalytic unit that will uh, bring about the kinase activity we know that kinases are those proteins which phosphorylates their substrates and as far as the activity of proteins and uh, switching of certain proteins or enzyme is concerned the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation is the mechanism by which 
various proteins can be switched on or switch off so here by means of kinase activity or the phosphorylation of its substrate certain proteins most notably the signaling proteins which are involved in signaling cascades are being switched on by these cyclin dependent kinases the mpf is a heterodimer of cyclin dependent kinase and cyclin it will promotes the entry of the cell into the mitosis and then it will disappear the cyclin and cyclin dependent complexes controls the cell cycle clock here in this diagram we can see the protein kinase would phosphorylate its target protein and when the target protein is phosphorylated it will become active it will do the job although it is not always so in some cases certain target proteins can also also be dephosphorylated and they become active in some cases the phosphorylation of the target protein may also result in its inactivation in a nutshell the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation matters a lot as far as protein activity is concerned now we can see in this particular diagram once a mpf that is cyclin dependent kinase is bound to the cyclin it can bring about variety of actions it can phosphorylate the chromosomal proteins it can phosphorylate microtubule associated proteins to activate the formation of the mitotic spindle and they can also phosphorylate certain enzymes which can degrade the cyclins and once cyclins are degraded the activity of cyclin dependent kinase would also fall now the entry of the cell from one stage to another particularly into m, m phase is initiated by this maturation promotion factors we already discussed that it is consist of two subunits a catalytic subunit that would transfer the phosphate group from atp to a specific serine and threonine residue of a specific protein substrate and a regulatory unit that is called as cyclin the level of cyclins are variable and when cyclin levels are low cell cycle would be arrested when cyclin levels are high then cell will progress into the amp phase now this particular question is asking the biological mechanism that governs the progression of the cell cycle from one stage to the next phosphorylation dephosphorylation protein degradation or all of the above we know that kinase and phosphatase activity that would bring about phosphorylation and dephosphorylation are always involved in the progression of the cell cycle or the regulation of the cell cycle and protein degradation also matters because it is the cyclin which get degraded and cell cycle would be arrested so in this particular case phosphorylation dephosphorylation and protein degradation all these mechanisms are involved in the progression of the cell cycle from one stage to the next so the right answer would be d that is all of the above the term cyclin was coined because the concentration of this regulatory protein rises and falls in a predictable manner as the cell cycle progresses we can see in this particular diagram as the cyclin level increases the cell will progress from uh, g1 to m phase when cyclin concentration is high simultaneously it will correlated with the activity of the mpf so as we see in the concentration increase of the cyclin simultaneously there will be increase in the mpf activity and when cyclins are being degraded by certain uh, proteolysis the cell would move into or will remain into the g0 phase again when cyclin concentration rises mpf activity rises and cell will transit from one stage to the next and that is how it will complete its cell cycle so mpf is a heterodimer that is of cdk and cyclin in different organisms we can have different kind of setups for example in yeast we have one cyclin dependent kinase and there are cyc several cyclins which get associated with these cdks whereas in the case of humans we have four different cyclins and four different cyclin dependent kinases these particular cyclin dependent kinases or cyclins are sometimes also named as g1 cyclins g2 cyclins 
M cyclins uh, and likewise in yeast and some other higher eukaryotes. Now, these cyclins whose concentration fluctuates matters as far as cell cycle regulation is concerned and their presence would activate the kinase proteins to trigger mitosis. The protein kinases would other activate other proteins in the cell by phosphorylation and thereby uh, the transition of the cell from one stage to another would be brought about. We have already discussed that cycling concentration rises and fall bring about the rise or fall in the activity of the kinase and the progression of the cell from one stage to another. The results indicate that the progression of the cell into the mitosis depends on an enzyme whose sole activity is to phosphorylate other proteins. Here it means to say cyclin dependent kinases. The activity of this enzyme that is cyclin dependent kinase is controlled by a subunit whose concentration varies from one stage of the cell cycle to another. Here the entity is cyclin. Now along with the concentration of the cyclin there are some other aspects also there are some other factors also which can have an impact on the activity of cyclin dependent kinases and the progression of the cell cycle from one stage to another. No doubt cyclins are the engines which will drive the cyclin dependent kinases from one stage to another but there are so many other factors which matters for cyclin dependent kinases. First and foremost factor is cyclin concentration. As cyclin concentration rises and fall the activity of cyclin dependent kinase will also rise and fall accordingly. Another thing is cyclin dependent kinase phosphorylation state because in some cases if it is phosphorylated at one amino acid, let it be serine, it might become active. But whenever it is phosphorylated at some other residue also, let it be threonine, it will become inactivated. So doubly phosphorylated, doubly phosphorylated state of certain CDKs would be inactive. Unphosphorylated state would also be inactive. So the phosphorylation state also matters a lot. Thereafter, CDK inhibitors for example P21 and few others if they are present they would not allow cyclin dependent kinase to work. Thereafter controlled proteolysis sometimes these cyclin dependent kinases can also be proteolyzed and that is how their activity can be stopped and then subcellular localizations. Subcellular localization is sometimes also called as sequestering where cyclin is there but they would be sent to some organelles so that they are not present in the cytoplasm to uh, bring about their role. As far as mammalian cell cycle is concerned, the combination between various cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases at different stages in the cell cycle, uh, the cell cycle activities during mid G1 are accomplished primarily by CDK4 and CDK6 associated with cyclin D type. Further, there are three different types of uh, D cyclins D1, D2 and D3. Among the substrate for these CDK is one of the very important regulatory protein that is called as RB or the retinoblastoma. The phosphorylation of the retinoblastoma would lead to transcription of number of genes including those codes for cyclin E and cyclin A, cyclin dependent kinase 1 and other proteins which are involved in replication. Because of all these things the G1 to S transition will take place that would include the initiation of the replication and would be driven by the activity of cyclin E along with cyclin 2 and cyclin A along with cyclin dependent kinase 2. So the transition from G2 to M would be driven by cyclin A and CDK1 and cyclin B and CDK1 complex which are thought to phosphorylate various subs diverse substrate for example cytoskeletal proteins, histones and proteins of the nuclear envelope. So once a cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase are complexed they would activate so many other genes and when these particular genes are modulated they will bring about uh, the synthesis of various proteins which are required for the transition of the cell from one stage to another. We are going to discuss this entire 
प्रोसेस ऑफ साइक्लिन साइक्लिन डिपेंडेंट काइनेजेस एंड द साइमल्टेनियस ट्रांजिशन ऑफ द सेल साइकिल फ्रॉम जी जीरो टू जी वन जी वन टू एस एस टू जी टू जी टू टू एम ऑन द टेलीटॉप लेट अस डिस्कस द एंटायर प्रोसेस ऑन द टेलीटॉप so if you'll see the transition of the cell cycle from g0 to g1 this would be bring about by two different cyclins cyclin d along with cyclin dependent kinase 4 and cyclin dependent kinase 6 this complex of cyclin d along with cy cyclin dependent kinase 4 cyclin d along with cyclin dependent kinase 6 would help the cell to move from g0 to g1 and from g0 g1 to s would be bring about by cyclin e along with cyclin dependent kinase 2 from here the cell will move from s to g2 here cyclin dependent kinase 1 and cyclin a would form a complex and would activate other proteins so that cell will shift from g2 to m phase here cyclin a and b along with cyclin dependent kinase 1 would make a complex this complex in turn would activate some other genes so that cell will move from g2 to m phase and once m phase is reached there would be the degradation of the cyclin a and d and cell cycle will get arrested at g0 phase here at g0 phase cell will take a conscious decision whether to move ahead in the cell cycle or to get arrested here if there is no need of the cell to divide further there will be no build up of cyclin d and that is why even if cdk4 and cdk6 are there they cannot bring about any effect in the absence of cyclin d if a cell is taking a decision to divide in that case there will be build up of cyclin d then it will complex with cyclin dependent kinase 4 cyclin dependent kinase 6 and the cell will progress from this particular g0 phase to g1 phase so this is how the cell cycle will transit from g0 to g1 g1 to s s to g2 and m so it is the fine tuning and combination of particular kind of cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases that helps the cell to move from one stage to another here we can see a particular question cell cycle is controlled by certain cyclins certain cyclin dependent kinases certain inhibitory proteins certain phosphatases so obviously the cell cycle is controlled by certain cyclins cyclin dependent kinases certain inhibitory proteins as well as in some cases certain phosphatases are also involved so all these options are correct and the right option is d or p q r and s similarly in the cell cycle it is asking for certain facts which is the correct uh, m phase is both the most complex and the longest phase there is a g0 phase in equilibrium with g1 phase quiescent cells cannot be induced to re-enter re the cell cycle microtubule spindles form during the s phase so we have to select which is the correct representation of the cell cycle so uh, m phase is not the most complex and longest phase we know that uh, it is interphase there is a g0 phase in equilibrium with g1 phase it is also not correct the quiescent cell cannot be induced to re-enter the cell cycle it is not correct and uh, 
they may enter into the cell cycle so as far as mammalian cell cycle is concerned the destruction of cyclin a and cyclin b is the key factor in the inactivation of cyclin dependent kinase 1 and the transition of the cell from mitosis back into the g1 so this is the diagram of the entire cell cycle we have also explained it on the teletop that how the transitions of the one phase to the next takes place uh, by the combination of various kinds of cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases now there is a question the decline of mpf that is maturation promotion factors or m phase promotion factors at the end of mitosis 1 is caused by the destruction of protein cdk decrease in the synthesis of cyclin the enzymatic destruction of cyclin or the synthesis of dna the correct answer is c because it is the destruction of the cyclin that results in the fall in its concentration and that results in the decline of the mpf activity again it is asking cell cycle is controlled by change in the concentration of cyclin dependent kinases change in the concentration of cyclin change in the concentration of both cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases or change in the activity of cyclin dependent kinases so the correct answers are uh, this one the change in the concentration of cyclin dependent kinases is not correct change in the concentration of cyclin along with change in the activity of cdk so q and s are the correct options because uh, there is no change in the concentration of cyclin dependent kinases there is change in their activity depending on the concentration of the cyclin so option c that is q and s is the most appropriate answer here now we have already discussed the cell cycle regulation no doubt there are certain cyclins and uh, their combination with cyclin dependent kinases will help a cell to move from one stage to another but within a cell a higher level of regulation is also there that is via cell cycle checkpoints there are three kinds of checkpoints where it is being ensured that whatever is required for the next stage is being synthesized appropriately and if it is not being done the cell will arrest at that particular stage itself there it will make two decision either it will correct the problem if it can be then it is good then cell will move to the next stage but if the problem cannot be corrected in that particular case cell will take a conscious decision to eliminate itself by apoptosis so here we can see the cell cycle is connected with apoptotic pathway we will also see in the coming discussion that cell cycle regulation would also be connected with the cancer so to ensure the orderly passage of the cell through the cell cycle there are defined checkpoints where certain events need to occur before the cell will proceed to the next stage of the cell or to complete the cell cycle otherwise the cell will be arrested or will stop at that checkpoint arrest itself there are three distinct uh cell cycle checkpoints g1 arrest that is g1 to s then s to g2 and then m arrest or g2 to m so these are three specific checkpoints and these checkpoints are governed by special kind of kinases which are known as checkpoint kinases if everything is fine then these checkpoint kinases would uh, allow the cell to move to the next stage but if there is something wrong or if there is some damage in that particular case it would not allow the cell to move to the next stage we can see in this particular diagram that g1 checkpoints will see certain criteria about the size of the cell about the environmental uh, conditions whether they are favorable or not if everything is fine then only cell will move from g1 to s then if in the s phase dna has been replicated properly size of the cell is appropriate the environment is favorable then cell will move from s to g2 if everything is fine there then cell will move from g2 to m and if spindle fiber formations and their assembly is correct 
the cell will pass the third checkpoint that is m wherever if things does not comply to whatever is required cell will arrest at that point itself so these cell cycle checkpoints are in fact are surveillance mechanisms that can halt the progress of the cell cycle if the chromosome is damaged or it is not replicated properly or if during the s phase or prior to the m phase if certain organelles are not being synthesized certain components are not synthesized in any of such cases the cell would arrest at that stage itself we can see in this particular diagram that these checkpoints at these three stages would ensure certain things and if those things will not take place the cell will not move to the next stage this ensures that only healthy and complete cells in uh, response to uh, with reference to the genetic material the quality of the genetic material its proper replication the number of organelles various proteins and other enzymes the amount of cytoplasm if everything is fine then only cell will move from one stage to the next if there is anything which is not being synthesized or if it is not being replicated properly in that case cell cycle would get arrested at that checkpoint now these checkpoints are being governed by certain sensors transmitters and effectors sensors are those entities which will detect an abnormality for example checkpoint kinases they are the sensors they will sense that there is something wrong in some cases like ataxia telangiectasia there is a gene that produces a protein that is known as atm ataxia telangiectasia monitoring gene which serves as a sensor whenever there is a damage it will be activated it will transmit that message via various signaling molecules they would be known as transmitters these transmitters will activate certain effectors that will inhibit the cell cycle machinery or arrest the cell cycle at that particular point these effectors would also involve certain proteins which will go and correct that particular damage for example if during the s phase if there is uh, improper replication of dna or if there is some damage in the dna in that case effectors will go correct that particular thing so in other words we can say that cell dna damage repair machinery will come into action it will go and correct the exact problem if that problem is solved then the sensor will give the message okay everything is fine one should move to the next stage this message would be uh, transferred or will be uh, relayed via various signaling proteins and cell cycle will move from that particular stage to the next but if things cannot be corrected even though dna damage machinery has been activated but suppose damage is too much it cannot be corrected in that condition these sensors would activate certain proteins certain signaling molecules which will activate apoptotic pathway and this particular cell will now die by apoptosis uh, any cell which is having damage or improperly replicated dna would not divide it would be halted and then it it would undergo apoptosis now here lies one very important thing if anyhow this surveillance mechanism does not work in that case what will happen a cell with damaged dna would start dividing and moment it is start dividing it will become a cancerous cell this is how the cancerous cells are generated in the body when it is not being properly uh stopped from the cell cycle division or its progression into the cell cycle that would be the first step towards the development of the cancer so what you will see is that if this particular things cannot be stopped at that particular stage when there is some damage to the dna or there is uh, improper machinery or improper steps have taken place in that case a uh, cell if it does not die by apoptosis there is a risk of that cell becoming transformed into a cancerous cell so if the dna is damaged beyond repair the checkpoint mechanisms of the eukaryotes would transmit a signal so the death of the cell or the apoptosis will ensue so that 
there is no chances of any cell becoming a cancerous now in a disease which is uh, ataxia telangiectasia here in this particular disorder uh, it is being characterized by a host of diverse symptoms including a great increase in the risk for certain type of cancer it is found that the patient with the at are extremely sensitive to ionizing radiations so two are their cells from these patients which lack a crucial protective response which is normally found in the normal cells and because of that since they cannot uh, be arrested at a particular stage these cells will move with the damaged dna and would become cancerous so once you cannot stop a cell at a particular stage with damage obviously it is going to become a cancerous cell now what happens at the checkpoint arrest if at a checkpoint arrest what happens p53 is being activated p53 we know it's a nucleophosphor protein which normally inhibits the cellular proliferation so moment there is something wrong p53 would be activated and it will halt the cell at that particular stage now this p53 is the link if p53 becomes mutated it would no longer would be able to stop the cell cycle and cell will move with the damaged dna and in the 50% of the lung cancer we have mutated or non functional p53 so moment p53 is not working the cells will become more liable to become cancerous so now we can see a interlink between the cell cycle regulation if cell cycle is completely regulated things will move smoothly if there are certain problems in that case cell will halt at a certain checkpoints if this problem can be corrected it is fine or else apoptosis will take place if apoptosis will not take place and if the proper machineries are not working for example p53 in that case cell will move into the cell cycle without proper mechanisms and in that case it will develop into a cancer and that is why the studies of all these cell cycle regulation processes and proteins has increased our knowledge about the treatment of the cancer so we can say there are two things the same two aspects of the same coin if things are regulated we see normal cell division if things cannot be regulated properly we see cancer now as we have studied cancer is the unregulated or uncontrolled proliferation of the cells so moment we lose the regulation of the cell cycle this is the start of the cancer so better understanding of the molecules which are involved in the cell cycle regulation gives us better insights how to avoid the cancer or what are the reasons that results into the cancer in between these two things there lies one important phenomena of the cell that is known as apoptosis or the program cell death before a cell become cancerous we have a chance if this cell die by apoptosis by the activation of various genes which are involved in the uh, apoptotic pathway for example those which are coding for caspases if they are activated then it is fine but if they cannot be activated obviously this would be the start point for the development of cancer so we can see the p53 would result into the activation of the p21 which is a cdk inhibitor which will bind to other cyclin dependent kinases and inhibit their action and arrest the cell until the dna damage is repaired but if there is mutation in p53 or p21 then cell will not stop even with the damaged dna it will carry out its cell cycle and here the cancer would take its first step so these cdk inhibitors whether p21 or p27 they plays a very important role the role of p53 p21 and p227 is now well documented in the generation of the cancers so moment something happens to these proteins and these proteins are now included under the category proto oncogenes that is
the proteins which regulates the cell cycle and moment uh, something happens to them they are also proto onco genes so mutations in these proto onco genes like p53 p21 would result into a cell becoming cancerous so we know that what is cancer cancer is a disease in which uh, there is no regulation over the cell cycle so uncontrolled or unregulated proliferation of the cell is known as cancer so obviously when the regulation of the cell cycle is lost it would be resulting into the cancer so in other words we can say that cancer is nothing but it is a disease of the cell cycle moment the cell cycle regulation is lost it would result into the generation of cancer the mutations in the genes which will result into the cell cycle proteins into unregulated growth resulting in tumor formation and then metastasis that is the invasion of the cancerous cells to other organs it will start with the mutation in those genes which are regulating the cell cycle moment the cell cycle controls or the regulations of the cell cycles are lost it will result into the development of cancer so moment these checkpoints are violated moments these regulations are lost it becomes the first step for the development of cancer only one thing can come to our rescue one is the initiation of the apoptotic pathway or else our immune system may come into the action that is nk cells or cytotoxic t lymphocytes if they can find this cancer cell they can kill this particular cell and we can be safe from cancer otherwise nobody can stop the development of the cancer so we know that as far as cancer is concerned it will disregard any single any signal to stop the proliferation of the cell it will disregard the signals to differentiate uh, it will be capable of sustained proliferation it will also evade the apoptosis uh, the cells will literally become uh, immortal and these cells will now detach or move from one position to the next by the process known as metastasis not only that all these tumors that would be formed they will result into the synthesis of new blood vessels the phenomena is known as angiogenesis so that these cells get a continuous supply of oxygen and blood and they keep on dividing so the root of the cancer lies in the loss of the regulation of the cell cycle this is another diagram that tells about various cell cycle checkpoints and various things that may happen if these cell cycle checkpoints are not being honored and moment these checkpoints are violated they will obviously result into either the initiation of the apoptotic pathway or they will might result into the development of cancer so this was all about the cell cycle and uh, we have discussed by this time various proteins which are involved in the regulation of the cell cycle we have uh, discussed about the concentration of the cyclins that have their impact via cyclin dependent kinases we also discuss cell cycle checkpoints which will ensure that whatever is required for a particular cell at a particular stage is being done if there is something wrong it would be corrected if it cannot be corrected there will be the initiation of apoptotic pathway or else if these things are violated or not being uh, honored properly then it may result into cancer the study of all these proteins all these molecules which regulates the cell cycle these are now playing a very important role in the treatment of cancer i hope this discussion about the regulation of the cell cycle would help you to prepare better for the net exam i wish you good luck for the exam and i thanks gsbtm for such initiatives thank you गुजरात